In today's lesson, we'll paint a mountain scene. I'll be using a model from a photograph of the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho. We'll be using the vignette composition. I love using the strong white space for a strong contrast in the painting. Let's get started and have some fun. Take your spray bottle, spray your pans of paint, put some water in your palette, and let's start with our round with pointed tip brush. Now, we will start by doing the mountains first. Let's take some of our white and put it on our palette. We want a light blue. And use some of our intense blue here. And so these mountains are a little jagged. So you want to make it jagged like a saw. And we're not going all the way across to the paper, leaving some space on the side here. Like that, that looks good. And then taking some of that paint and spreading it. And you'll notice that I'm not loading my brush. I'm just dipping my brush in water and spreading some more of that paint. With watercolor, a little paint goes a long way. Just spread that paint. down a little bit here. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now we're going to work on the next step. And it's good to go to a different area of working with your watercolor and then come back and put stronger contrast and that will give it time to dry naturally. So below these mountains is some nice trees. So let's use some sap green. And that's going to be our first layer and put some not tall trees standing there. And when I do my trees, I like to take my brush and start with a point and then flare off to the side, alternating. And I'm starting on one side here and I'm going to work across the painting here and have it go up into the mountains there a little bit and continue to go across down a little bit and load your brush as needed Just relax your grip. Have it go up into the mountains a little bit there. Spread that paint. And load your brush as needed. Need some little, some trees over here. Again, spread the paint. Okay, now below these trees, there's a meadow and the grass has not green. It's more of a gold. So let's start with using some yellow ochre. And kind of makes make the strokes a little wispy. 
and you can let it run into the green here. That's not going to be a big problem. If it runs, that's okay. It's going to give it character. Just kind of do some cross hatching. And load your brushes needed. And bring it down a little bit here. Keep going across. A little more. And I see that my meadow needs to come over a little bit. have it look more balanced. Okay, let's stop and give it a good dry. Okay, now let's switch brushes to our liner brush. And let's start by working on the mountains and add some more detail and variation. So now let's add a little bit darker color and add a touch of crimson. That will give it a different hue. Just a touch. Okay, and add some on the top here. And just sporadically putting some valleys where there's the sh the, there's some shadow casting on the mountain. And then if it's too dark, just dip, dip your brush and spread that paint. A little more up here. Spread this a little further down. And spread it here, it needs it. A little more over here. And I think it needs a touch over here. Let's go back and work on the trees here. Using our sap green. And let's add some burnt umber. We want to make it a little darker. Another shade darker. Put some variation in that forest. Again, I'm starting on one side of the painting and going to the next. Going along here, along my nice forests below the mountains. Just spread that paint and load your brush as needed. Okay. 
That's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, on the meadow here, let's add another shade to that by using our ochre and a touch of burnt umber. Again, do a little cross hatching here. Just start on one end and go to the next. It's looking pretty good. All right. Now, in this meadow is a fence. Let's load our brush with burnt umber and start our fence about right here, two posts, and then a couple that are out that way, and then it goes back this way, and some right here, two, another two post right here. And then out that way, like that. Now we need to put some little shadows below the post. And you can add a little green, just a touch, on where the posts are, just a touch. Or this is your creation your mountain, your interpretation. Now, there's a tree by the fence and it is a darker green. So let's mix our sap green with both burnt umber and burnt sienna. And it's right by this post here. Just peeking out. And it comes a little below the fence here. Like that. Let's give it a good dry. Okay, I think we need to add some another shade of dark in the forest here and bring that line of trees up a little bit. So let's use our sap with or burnt sienna and burnt umber.
and load your brush is is what you need and have fun with this this is your forest that you're walking through smell those pine trees all right and just remember to pause between your strokes that kind of helps you get perspective and then sit back and look at your painting so now let's work on the mountain now the mountain there's two shades now let's use something stronger load your brush with ultramarine blue and a touch of crimson we want this to be dark give more definition to these mountains i love the the song that has a purple mountain majesty and this reminds me of that Just, we need some of that dark, dark contrast. I think I need a little more purple. To intensify it, make it kind of stand out. And again, if it's too strong, you can add water and dab it. And dilute the paint if you need to. And I think I just need to dab it a little bit. Watercolor, you can think as a fun experiment. And sometimes you just need to dab it a little bit and then add a little water to it. doesn't need much and you can always rework areas and you know that's the fun I like about watercolor is it's flexible and you know all you need to do to fix it is water magical h2o again you can just if it's too stands out too much you can just give it a little dab what I like about dabbing is it gives it a little texture too. And these need a little work here. And have fun with it. Play with it. Be adventurous. Like you're going on a, a mountain hike. Don't be afraid to try new things and it's just a piece of paper. All right. I have one thing I see that I want to add and I want to darken parts of the fence here. And again, I'm just loading my liner brush with burnt umber and just strengthening some of those lines and putting one just on the tree you don't need much just a little bit on the surface like that to kind of just make it pop Now let's work on the sky above the mountains. We want this to be really, really faint. So I'm gonna clean my palette here. And I wanna add some white. I 
on my palette and a touch of the intense blue. You don't need much, just like a dab. It's a very strong color. Again, I like to have my paper towel ready and handy if I need to dab. And just gonna put a puffy, puffy little cloud above the mountain. Not much, just really faint. This little mountain is just floating above the, past the mountain. Just like that. You just want it super faint, like that. And again, you can re rework watercolor, and that's the wonderful thing about it. And then stand back and look at your painting. I like it. I hope you like yours and that you enjoyed today. Take care and have a great day.